If you've ever stood in an auto parts store, you know the feeling, right? You're staring at a wall of synthetic oils, and they're all screaming that they're the best. Well, today we're going to cut through all that noise and focus on one single question. What is it that makes Pennzoil, especially their fancy stuff, so special? I mean, you have get the heavyweights, Pennzoil Ultra Platinum, Mobile One, Valvoline Advanced Synthetic. Car people argue about these all day long. But is there really a clear winner when the rubber actually meets the road? Or is the real secret hiding somewhere else entirely? To really get to the bottom of this, we're going to tackle it from two different angles. First, we'll see how these oils actually perform inside real engines, you know, out on the street. And then, we're putting on the lab coats and going under the microscope to decode the chemical formula itself. All right, let's get into it. So we're kicking things off with a classic head-to-head -head battle. And a huge shout out to YouTuber WhatYouKnowJoe67 for doing some amazing real-world testing. Thanks to him, we get to see exactly how Pennzoil stacks up against its biggest rivals, where it really, truly matters. Inside an engine, protecting it from wear. Okay, so here's the game plan. The oils will run in normal cars for about 5,000 miles. Then, a little sample of that used oil gets mailed off to the pros at Blackstone Labs. They've got these incredible machines that can measure the tiniest little flecks of metal that have worn off engine parts. The rule here is super simple. The lower the number of these metal particles, measured in parts per million, or PPM, the better the oil did its job. Lower is better. That's all you gotta remember. All right, first up, we've got a Ford F-150 with that 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine. And this is a perfect test, because those turbocharged engines can be really tough on oil. So let's see how Pennzoil held up against Valvoline. Okay, now what's really fascinating here is just how close this is. Take a look at aluminum and copper. They are identical a flat-out tie at 4.5 parts per million. But then, look at iron. Iron is a huge deal, a major sign of engine wear. Pennzoil comes in at just 5 ppm. Valvoline is at 7. Now both of those are absolutely stellar compared to the average of 14, but there's no denying it. Pennzoil has the edge here. And this chart just makes that difference pop. You can see it right there. Pennzoil's bar is just a little bit shorter. We're not talking about a massive gap, but look. When it comes to protecting the expensive metal inside your engine, every single part per million counts. And again, compared to what's considered average for this engine, both of these oils are playing in the big leagues. So, for round one in the F-150, the numbers don't lie. The win goes to Pennzoil. It simply allowed less iron to wear away from those critical parts. It's a clear, data-driven victory. But hey, one test isn't enough, right? We need to see if this is a pattern or just a fluke. So for round two, we've got a Jeep Grand Cherokee with that workhorse 3.6 liter V6. Does Pennzoil do it again? Let's check the numbers. And what do you know, it's pretty much the same story. The results are incredibly tight. Copper is a dead tie again. But then you look at aluminum and iron, and there it is. Pennzoil squeaks by with one less part per million in both categories. And once again, both of them are just demolishing the universal average, but Pennzoil is consistently just barely ahead. Now, the original test didn't stop there. They threw Mobile One into the mix as well. And across a bunch of different cars, like a Chevy Trax and others, the same thing kept happening. Almost every time, it was basically a statistical tie. But more often than not, it was Pennzoil that had that tiny one or two parts per million advantage. So after digging through all this real-world data, what's the final verdict? Can we just declare Pennzoil the undisputed champ based on these tests? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. You know, the guy who ran all these tests, what, you know, Joe 77, he kind of summed it up perfectly himself. He said, look, we're only talking one or two parts per million here. The difference is so tiny, it's a photo finish. And he said he'd be happy to run either brand in his cars. For your typical oil change, he is absolutely right. And that leads us to the real mystery here. If the actual difference in wear is barely even measurable, then where does Pennzoil get off slapping extreme protection on the bottle? Is that all it is? Just some really clever marketing hype? Or is there something deeper going on that these tests just aren't showing us? To find that answer, we have to completely change our perspective. We have to stop looking at the used oil coming out of the engine and start looking at the fresh oil going in. So we're shifting gears, diving into a deep chemical analysis, thanks to the motor oil geek, to see what's actually hiding inside that bottle. And this, right here, is where the light bulb really goes on. This isn't just about Pennzoil versus somebody else. This is about the difference inside Pennzoil's own family. Their top-of-the-line ultra-platinum isn't just a different label. 
Look at this. It's got way more calcium, which is a detergent that keeps your engine clean. It's got a much bigger shot of molybdenum, which is a friction reducer. And then you see this, boron. It's not even in the regular platinum, but it's here in the ultra. That is our big clue. This boron, it's not just another ingredient they tossed in the soup. It is the absolute key to understanding that extreme protection claim. You might even call it Penzoil's secret weapon. We need to figure out what this stuff is actually doing on a molecular level. The specific compound is called a borate ester. Now, don't worry, we're not going to turn this into a chemistry class. All you really need to know is that this is a very advanced, fully synthetic additive. It's really good at preventing wear and cutting down friction, but its most important job isn't what it does all by itself. This is the mic drop moment. The motor oil geek explains it perfectly. This borate ester isn't just another player on the field. It's a force multiplier. It doesn't just add its own protection. It works with the other key additives, the molybdenum and the ZDDP, to make them all work better. Think of it like a sports team, okay? ZDDP, that's your powerhouse defender, your main anti-wear guy. Molly Benham, that's your slick, fast player who reduces all the friction. But the Borate Ester, that's the coach. It's the synergist. It takes these two already great players and gets them working together to create a result that's way bigger than what they could do on their own. It elevates the whole team's game. And it's really important to know that this entire advanced chemical package is built on an incredibly pure foundation. Pennzoil uses what's called a gas to liquid or GTL base oil. It's literally made from natural gas, not crude oil, which gives them this crystal clear, super clean starting point to build their high performance formula on top of. Okay, let's bring it all home. We've seen the real world tests. We've decoded the chemical formula. It's time to finally answer that big question we started with. What is it that makes Pennzoil so special? So here's the bottom line. What makes Pennzoil special has almost nothing to do with winning a short-term wear test by one or two points. It's the entire philosophy behind its chemical recipe. The special part is that chemistry, that deliberate synergistic team of additives coached by boron designed to work together to provide protection that goes way beyond the basics. The secret isn't in the results of one test, it's in the formulation itself. That whole extreme protection claim, it's probably not something you're gonna notice in a single oil change. It's more like a chemical promise for long-term durability. So the final question really is for you. Now that you're in on the chemical secret, do you think Penswell's formula earns that special status for the long-term health of your engine? Thanks for joining me for this breakdown.